In the dimly lit motel parking lot, amidst the flickering glow of the vacancy sign, I found myself caught in a web of deception and betrayal. As I sat in my car, observing the unfolding drama, my heart raced with a mixture of panic and rage. The scene before me was like something out of a noir film, a cheating spouse, a clandestine rendezvous, and a husband teetering on the edge of despair. The tension mounted as I watched my wife, Helen, slip into the motel room with her secret lover, leaving me stranded in the shadows, consumed by a whirlwind of conflicting emotions. Should I confront her? Should I expose her infidelity and shatter our marriage into a million irreparable pieces? Or should I retreat into the darkness, burying the truth deep within my soul, forever haunted by the memory of that fateful night? Tammy paid no attention to me. After settling the bill and returning to the car, I handed the room key to the manager across the counter, but he completely disregarded it. Instead, he got up, walked to the wall behind his desk, and switched on a red glow that flickered on the walls. I turned around, thinking it might be a police light, but it turned out to be the flashing vacancy sign that he had just activated. It seemed that our room was the last one available, and now the manager was attempting to rent it out twice in one evening. The next thing he did was pick up the phone, dial two numbers, pause, and then urgently say, Doreen na three. Only after that did he return to the counter with my bill. Once I had paid and returned to my car, I noticed the maid's cart already positioned in front of the open door of the room where Tammy and I had spent the past hour. I got into the car, expressed my gratitude to Tammy for the enjoyable time we had, and told her how much fun I had with her. As usual, she paid no attention to me, completely absorbed in her phone. The same thing had happened on the way to the motel, as if our time together was merely a temporary distraction from her incessant texting with her friends. I tried to make my words sound meaningful, but in reality I was only pretending. I felt relaxed and satisfied because she knew how to please me and make me enjoy myself. In return, I usually provided her with satisfying intimacy, which she greatly appreciated. There was nothing more to our relationship than that. Just as I finished expressing my casual gratitude, I noticed another car swiftly entering the parking lot not far from mine. I wasn't concerned, since most of the lights in the motel parking lot were not functioning. Moreover, I had parked my car so carefully in a dark area that no one could discern its color, let alone see my license plates. The new car parked almost directly in front of the office, basking in the white light and accentuated by the flashing red vacancy sign. As I sat in my seat, observing the familiar woman, I found myself enveloped in darkness, hidden from her view. However, it seemed pointless to take such precautions. Stepping into the bright white light, the woman's worried face was illuminated by the flashing red vacancy sign. My heart skipped a beat. It was Helen. Within seconds, they reached the room's entrance. The maid had already departed. My wife entered the room and the door closed behind them. My initial instinct was to leap out of the car, forcefully break down the door, pummel the man, and forcefully drag Helen back to my car by her hair. But I composed myself, taking a deep breath. I glanced at Tammy to see if she had noticed anything, but she was completely engrossed in her phone. As my panic subsided, fear washed over me, my throat constricted as if someone were choking the life out of me. These physical and mental reactions were a result of the realization that I had the power to prevent Helen from betraying me, but doing so would irreparably damage our marriage. To prevent myself from succumbing to my impulses, I started the car. I didn't trust myself to stay there, as I feared I might do something I would regret for the rest of my life. Hastily, I drove to the mall where Tammy had left her car as a disguise. I parked a few rows behind her. Sensing that the car had stopped, she looked up, recognized our location, and opened the door. Goodbye. In an instant, she vanished from my sight. I scanned the parking lot, but there was no one around. Overwhelmed, I let out a scream before succumbing to tears. I struck the steering wheel with such force that my hand throbbed with pain. I also desired to strike myself on the head forcefully enough to dispel the tumultuous thoughts racing in my mind. The duration it took for me to regain composure remains unknown, as I refrained from glancing at my timepiece. However, I was aware that I now had one less inquiry remaining. Due to the maid's lack of time, the bedding was likely just placed on top, leaving Helen covered in the dried perspiration left behind by Tammy and me.
The notion caused me to choke. I compelled myself to banish that image from my mind and contemplate the forthcoming events. What choices do I have? I could promptly return home, compensate Mrs. Reynolds, and dismiss her. Prior to Helen's arrival, I could indulge in a few beverages. Once she notices my vehicle in the garage, she will have ample time to rehearse her fabricated narrative. I possess a general understanding of how it will unfold. She will claim to have needed to purchase an item at the mall. I pondered whether this was the same shopping center where I parked. Should I drive around, locate her car, and await her arrival? Helen is meticulous in her planning, just as I am. It is likely that she procured the necessary items in advance and stored them in her trunk. The purchases are concealed within a shopping bag in her trunk. Later in the evening, when her companion drops her off at the mall, she will enter with her bag and wander around, hoping to coincidentally encounter an acquaintance who can serve as evidence of her shopping excursion. Subsequently, she will return to her car with the bag. This is the scene I would witness if I fortuitously stumbled upon her vehicle and caught her off guard. Her surprise upon seeing me upon her return home will be genuine, as I informed her that I would be working late and would not arrive until after she had fallen asleep. I pondered whether she had attempted to contact me at the office before departing from home. However, it was inconsequential, as I had taken precautions. If my phone were to go directly to voicemail, she would interpret it as me engaging in a conversation with a client after business hours. There was no one else present in the office to converse with. Following my encounters with Tammy, I always hastened back to the office and toiled in solitude for a couple of hours. I anticipated receiving a call from Helen, indicating that she was ready to retire for the night. Once I received that call, I planned on leaving shortly after and heading straight home. There is no need for me to return to the office tonight. I am uncertain if Helen will contact me from the motel. What should I say to her when she arrives home? Should I attempt to confuse her? Perhaps I could start by inquiring about her purchases. Was she at the mall where my sister is employed? Did she happen to see her? I highly doubt she would appear fatigued and perspiring. Instead, she would likely take a shower and appear refreshed. For the sake of Mrs. Reynolds, let's suppose I were to gaze into Helen's eyes. What would I discover? However, as soon as I pondered this scenario, I realized it would never come to fruition. I never inquire about her shopping endeavors. I may have gotten away with asking once, but Helen's intuition would have been alerted after that. I trembled at the thought of how events would unfold. What began with me interrogating her would ultimately result in her interrogating me. She would not rest until she knew what was on my mind. I would attempt to remain silent, but the outcome would inevitably be the same. She would find a way to make me divulge everything. She would confess and provide explanations, detailing her reasons for infidelity. She would likely admit that her reasons were insufficient. The only justifiable reason would have been seeking revenge. However, that was not the case. If she had known I was at the motel and sought to retaliate, she would have approached my vehicle while holding the other man's hand and spat on my window before entering the room. She would have also turned around at the door and gestured obscenely at me before entering. If I were to attempt to break down the door, she would promptly contact the authorities and have me spend the night in jail. No, she had no inkling that I was there. She was there for her own reasons. Why was I not enough for her? She never appeared dissatisfied in our intimate moments. If she desired something out of the ordinary, she always communicated it to me. However, such occurrences were rare. Helen typically exuded a positive and cheerful demeanor. She always wore a smile. I tried to recollect if there were any indications that she was discontented with our relationship. About a month ago, it suddenly occurred to me that she had asked if I was getting bored with her. Without hesitation, I vehemently reassured her that such a thought was absurd. She has always been and will continue to be the most thrilling aspect of my life. However, now I find myself struck by a sudden realization. It wasn't dissatisfaction that lingered within me, but rather a sense of disappointment. How many times has she experienced this disappointment? I could recall a few instances, but there were likely many more. Although she appeared to be in high spirits, I was exhausted. She never criticized me, yet she felt let down. She once mentioned that my constant need for affection could become tiresome at times. However, it seemed that now she desired it more than I did. I assured her that this was not the case. Hadn't I proven my intense desire for her every time we made love?
Nevertheless, she sensed that something was amiss. I worked diligently, spent time with our children, and carried out my usual household responsibilities. However, now I had someone else to worry about, Tammy. I had never considered it before, but our sexual encounters remained as frequent as ever, if not more so. The only difference was that now there were two women involved, resulting in one of them feeling rejected. This upset her and caused her to doubt herself. Helen possesses a beauty and allure that rivals women who are 10 to 15 years younger. I was certain that she faced scrutiny at the office since I was no longer pursuing her as ardently as before. She must have questioned her own attractiveness as a woman. This vulnerability made her susceptible to the advances of someone who took advantage of her weakened defenses once she decided to succumb to him. I am certain she had planned it out meticulously, whether it was through shopping at the mall or devising another reliable scheme. She must have discovered that Mrs. Reynolds, who babysat for only a select few families, was often available on short notice, just like Tammy had done. Perhaps she even scouted out various inconspicuous and affordable motels, allowing her and the man to move from one to another until they found an opportunity. Once she finished preparing herself, all Helen had to do was wait until the next time I called her and informed her that I would be working late. About a month ago, it suddenly occurred to me that she had asked if I was getting bored with her. Without hesitation, I vehemently reassured her that such a thought was absurd. She has always been and will always be the most thrilling aspect of my life. However, now I find myself struck by a sudden realization. It wasn't dissatisfaction that lingered within me, but rather a sense of disappointment. How many times has she experienced disappointment? I could recall a few instances, but there were likely many more. Although she appeared to be in high spirits, I was exhausted. She never criticized me, yet her disappointment was evident. She once mentioned that my previous demands for love occasionally bored her. However, it seemed that now she desired it more than I did. I assured her that this was not the case. Hadn't I proven my intense desire for her every time we made love? Nevertheless, she sensed that something was amiss. I worked diligently, spent time with our children, and carried out my usual household responsibilities. However, now I had someone else to worry about. Tammy. I had never considered it before, but our sexual encounters remained as frequent as ever, if not more so. The only difference was that now there were two women involved, resulting in one of them feeling rejected. This upset her and caused her to doubt herself. Helen possesses a beauty and allure that rivals women who are 10 to 15 years younger. I was certain that she faced scrutiny at the office since I was no longer pursuing her as ardently as before. She must have questioned her own attractiveness as a woman. This vulnerability made her susceptible to the attention of someone who took advantage of her weakened defenses once she decided to succumb to him. I am certain she had planned it out meticulously, whether it was through shopping at the mall or devising another reliable scheme. She knew that Mrs. Reynolds, who babysat for only a few families, was readily available on short notice most days, just like Tammy had done. She probably scouted out all the discreet and affordable motels, ensuring that she and the man could move from one to another until they found an available room. Once she finished preparing herself, all Helen had to do was wait until the next time I called her and informed her that I would be working late. She had the ability to put on a show for me, the children, our family, and friends. However, I was aware that there would be numerous occasions when we would be alone and she would grow weary. In those moments, her guard would come down, and I would witness the pain and sorrow of her losing complete faith, security, and trust in me. That is precisely why I would have to end our marriage as soon as the children were grown and gone. I cannot bear to look into those eyes every day, all alone. She held me in such high regard, and I took it for granted. Every time her eyes revealed my mistakes, it felt like a dagger to my heart. No, it should never be this way. She will never know what I did or what I knew. Her life will be better than ever. Regardless of the amount of money I may have to sacrifice, I will make it a point to come home for dinner every night from now on. I rarely traveled for business, but that is all in the past now. We do not need money that desperately. I will stick to her like glue, ensuring that she never even considers leaving me again. I will provide her with more intimacy than a porn star. I will not stop until she tells me that the pain is too much to bear. 
I will keep track of how many times I bring her pleasure each month and strive to surpass that record as frequently as possible. We will embark on new experiences together, things we have never done before. One evening, we will sit down and create bucket lists, and then we will work on them together. She will radiate with joy for a moment. I pondered whether Helen would ever regret her unfaithfulness, as she relished her charmed life with a husband she believed to be faithful and our wonderful children. Perhaps not. If she is anything like me when I was with Tammy, I never thought about Helen. I knew she would never find out, and what she doesn't know won't harm her. Helen will likely feel the same way. I am her content, loyal husband, and she is my devoted wife. Since it only occurred once, it holds no significance. If she feels any guilt, she will eventually let it go. In the coming weeks or months, she will make it up to me, and eventually, it will all fade from her memory, allowing her to forget it ever happened. But not me. I am aware that regardless of my efforts to suppress the memory, I will always remember that particular evening when she entered the room after me. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to avoid being deceived by your second chaff and proceed to listen to the upcoming story as it surpasses the current one. If you are below 18 years old, refrain from even considering listening to the following story. It pertains to listening.